Hello, my YouTube family. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for uh, subscribing and joining, and I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> pray first before we continue reading. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything. Um, Lord, I pray and ask you to be with everyone who's in need, and please give us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so we're going to read chapters 11, 12, and 13. <clears throat> The death of Egypt's firstborn. This is the last plague. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will strike Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with one more blow. After that, Pharaoh will let you leave this country. In fact, he will be so eager to get rid of you that he will force you all to leave. Tell all the Israelite men and women to ask their Egyptian neighbors for articles of silver and gold. Now the Lord had caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the people of Israel. And Moses was considered a very great man in the land of Egypt, respected by Pharaoh's officials and the Egyptian people alike. Moses had announced to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord says, At midnight tonight I will pass through the heart of Egypt. At the first, All the firstborn sons will die in every family in Egypt, from the oldest son of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, to the oldest son of the lowliest servant girl who finds, who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all the livestock will die. Then a loud wail will rise through out of the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that none, not even that not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. All the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. Please leave. They will beg, hurry, and take all your followers with you. Only then will I go. Then, burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Now, the Lord had told Moses earlier, Pharaoh will not listen to you, but then I will do even more mighty miracles in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed more miracles in Pharaoh's presence, but the Lord had hardened Pharaoh's heart and wouldn't let the Israelites leave the country. Chapter 12 the first Passover. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of these meat, any of the meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, legs, and internal organs, must be roasted over a fire. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. These are your instructions for eating this meal, but fully dressed. Wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marketing the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is a day to remember. Each year, from generation to generation, you must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. This is the law of for all time. For seven days, the bread uh, you eat must be made without yeast. On this, the first day of the festival, remove every trace of yeast from your homes. Anyone who eats bread made with yeast during the seven days of the festival will be cut off from the countryside community of Israel. On the first day of the festival, and again on the seventh day, all the people must observe an official day for Holy Assembly. 
No work of any kind must be done on these days except in the preparation of food. Celebrate the fest this festival of unleavened bread. For it will remind you that I brought your forces out of the land of Egypt on this very day. This festival will be a permission law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 21st day of that month. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your homes. Anyone who eats anything made with yeast during this week will be cut off from the community of Israel. These regulations apply both to the foreigners living among you and the native-born Israelites. During those days, you must not eat anything made with yeast. Wherever you live, eat only bread made without yeast. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin, then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top of the sides of the door frames of your houses, and no one may go out through the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the top of the sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. Remember these instructions are permanent law. Remember these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. When you enter the land the Lord has promised to give you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. Then your children will ask, What does the ceremony mean? And you will reply, It is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he has passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. And, through, and though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all the people bowed down to the ground and worshipped. So the people of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded through Moses and Aaron. And that night at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn son of the prisoner in the dungeon. Even the firstborn of their livestock were killed. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night and a loud wailing was heard throughout the land of Egypt. There was not a single house where someone had not died. <clears throat> Israel's Exodus from Egypt Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Get out, he ordered. Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you requested. Take your flocks and herds as you said and be gone. Go, but bless me as you leave. All the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out of their land as quickly as possible, for they thought we will all die. The Israelites took their bread dough before yeast was added. They wrapped their kneading breads, boards in their cloaks and carried them on their shoulders. When the people of Israel did as Moses had instructed, they asked the Egyptians for clothing and their and articles of silver and gold. The Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. That night, the people of Israel left Ramses and started for Sakoth. There were about 600,000 men, plus all the women and children. A, rabbi, a rabble of non-Israelites went with them, along with great flocks of herds of livestock. For bread, they baked flat cakes from the dough without yeast, and they had brought from Egypt. It was made without yeast because the uh, people were driven out of Egypt in such a hurry that they had no time to prepare the bread or other food. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt for 430 years. In fact, it was on the last day of the 430th year that the Lord forces left the land. On this night, the Lord kept his promise to bring the, his people out of the land of Egypt. So this night belongs to him and it must be commemorated every year by all the Israelites from generation to generation. Instructions for the Passover. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, These are the instructions for the festival of Passover. No outsiders are allowed to eat the Passover meal. But any slave who has been purchased may eat if he has been circumcised. Temporary residents are, and hired servants may not eat. Each Passover lamb <coughs> must be eaten in the one house. Do not carry any of its meat outside, and do not break any of its bones. The whole community of Israel must celebrate the Passover festival. 
If there are foreigners living among you who want to celebrate the Lord's Passover, let all their males be circumcised. Only then may they celebrate the Passover with you like any native-born Israelite. But no circum uncircumcised male may ever eat at the Passover meal. This instruction applies to everyone, whether a native-born Israelite or a foreigner living among you. So all the people of Israel followed all the Lord's commands of Moses and Aaron. On that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. Dedication of the Firstborn, Chapter 13 Then the Lord said to Moses, Dedicate to every firstborn among the Israelites the Dedicate to me every firstborn among the Israelites. The first offspring to be born of both humans and animals belongs to me. So Moses said to the people, This is the day to remember forever, the day you left Egypt, the place of your slavery. Today the Lord has brought you out by the power of his mighty hand. Remember, eat no food containing yeast. On this day in early spring in the month of Abib, you have been set free. You must celebrate this event in the month of in this month, each year after the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanite, Hittites, Omerites, Hivites, and Jebusites, he swore to your ancestors that he would give you this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. For seven days the bread you eat must be made without yeast. Then on the seventh day celebrate a feast to the Lord. Eat bread without yeast during those seven days. In fact, there must be no yeast. There must be no yeast bread or any yeast at all found within the borders of your land during this time on the 17th day you must explain to your children i am celebrating what the lord did for me when i left egypt this annual festival will be a visible sign to you like a mark branded on your fan or your forehead let it remind you always to recite the teaching of the lord with a strong hand the lord rescued you from egypt so observe the decree of your festival at the appointed time each year this is what must do what you must do when the lord fulfills the promise he swore to you and your ancestors when he gives you the land where the canaanites now live you must present all firstborn sons and firstborn male animals to the lord for they belong to him a firstborn donkey may be bought back for, from the Lord by presenting a lamb or a young goat in its place, but if you do not buy it back, you must break its neck. However, you must buy back every firstborn son. And in the future, your children will ask you, what does all this mean? Then you will tell them, with the power of his mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, the place of our slavery. Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go. So the Lord killed all the firstborn males throughout the land of Egypt, both people and animals. This is why I now sacrifice all the firstborn males to the Lord, except that the firstborn sons are always brought back. This ceremony will be like a mark branded on your hand or, or your forehead. It is a reminder that the power of the Lord's mighty hand brought us out of Egypt. <clears throat> Israel's Wilderness Detour when Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through the Philistine territory. Even though that was the shortest route to the Promised Land, God said if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus, the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready to battle, ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to do this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. When he does, you must take my bones with you from this place. The Israelites left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of, or of cloud and provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night, and the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. All right, well, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored, may your kingdom come. Lord, thank you for this day, thank you for everything. I pray and ask everyone's getting as much as they can out of Exodus. Lord, thank you for everything you have given us, and I pray and ask everything goes well with everyone. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, well, see you on the next episode.